us where I stand Another serenader and another long-haired band Today I am your champion and may you have won your hearts But I know the game and you'll forget my name And I won't be here in another year if I don't stay on the charts Performing is really the essence of what I do. I mean, before there were records, before there was radio, before there was any media, uh, there was music, and the only way people heard music was by going to a performance of it. And that's what rock and roll comes down to. It's the show, it's the performance. Everything else is secondary to the show. You perform in a jacket and tie. You're, you're photographed in it quite frequent. Why? I, I, about three years ago, I, I uh, put on a jacket and a tie as a goof, and it felt good. This was the, the days when everybody was either wearing, you know, you know, ripped T-shirts and, uh, you know, granola boots, or else they were wearing, you know, flaming headdresses and glitter, and I just wasn't comfortable in that stuff. And the jacket and tie kind of became my trademark. I mean, I don't wear my tie all the way up. It's not like I'm wearing a tuxedo. And a lot of times, I wear jeans and sneakers with the outfit. So it's... Uh, it's, it's kind of a sign of respect for an audience that's going to pay all this money for tickets to come see you. Between his performances in Philadelphia, I followed Billy Joel to WIOQ Radio, where he talked on the air with his longtime friend, Ed Shockey. Well, Ed, uh, we go back a long way. This was when we did the uh, radio concert where Captain Jack was recorded. And... Uh, and I guess kept programming it, and people kept requesting it. And he's uh, he's one of the people in radio who's just always stuck by me, you know. Like he's always played my music, whether a record was a commercial success or not. In the past, you've been sort of cynical about uh, the showbiz aspects of uh, the music business. Uh, are you still cynical now that you've achieved success? I don't buy the whole American dream thing of what success is, like a lot of money and being able to retire before you're 30. It's that's not success to me. Success is doing what you like to do and being good at it. Now, I've met, I've met too many <laughs> stars who are the, you know, real established big stars, and I've seen it go to their head, and it's just, it's boring. You know? Well, me, me, I, me, me and my deal and my movies and, well, my image, you know, it's like, get away from me, you know? I was going to ask you a little bit about, about your background. I know we've talked before about it, but you, you started piano at a real young age, right? Four, 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 yeah. yeah. And I guess what you you learned classical. They yeah. didn't they didn't say hey play the latest Beatle record. They said play. Uh, no, well, you start with the John Thompson book. Right. And anybody who takes piano lessons must know about the John Thompson books. There are these red books, and every song has a title like the Strong Man, the Swan, uh, the Lake. Uh, the first song I ever learned was song number one in the John Thompson music book. It's called Off We Go to Music Land, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it has little lyrics underneath. Off we go to music land. Na, 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 and take my hand. Something like that. And I, st I started riffing on it right away. <laughs> you know. You're known for being such a fast piano player t to completely change it. You, you do like Root Beer Rag and Angry Young Man, they have like really incredibly fast, incredibly fast uh, parts, you know. Did you That's from Bach, probably. I picked that up from... Really? Yeah, these Bach inventions that go... Um... One of Billy Joel's top songs has been the one he calls Angry Young Man, which many people would say also fits his image. Well, I don't know if it's angry or intense. You know, I got my feet ready to punch. I'm planted, you know. I don't think of myself as being angry, though. I was believed in causes, too. I had my pointless point of view. The, the, 
future in your music? Do you want to get bigger and bigger? Do you want to? What do you want for the future? I, I, it's really abstract. I have my own musical ideals. Um, there's nothing to do with selling a lot of albums. I want to write the best music I can write, and I'm going to try to keep pulling it out of myself and getting better and better and better. It's like the old craftsmanship idea, um, like the old composers were. They wanted to write masterpieces. Um, it, and it sounds far-fetched, and a lot of it might have nothing to do with rock and roll stardom. I don't care about that. I'm, uh, I want to just keep satisfying myself musically to see what I can come up with challenging myself. Joel is a fierce performer, and his songs are bittersweet. He always seems to expect the worst. But because of his sheer talent, in the future, even if he stays a pessimist, the chances are he'll still be a success. I still belong. 